I'm Daniel. I'm Shataka. And I'm Christy. And this week, our social media moment was, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. That's 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and you could go a lot of ways with that, but today we're going to talk about anxiety, and I think that that's something that everybody has dealt with at some point in their life. I would say this last month, I mean, month the month of May, mm-hmm. April, I, everybody has dealt with some type of anxiety mm-hmm. with what's going on in the world, yeah. whether it be through the COVID-19, whether it be through the, the through the incident with uh, George Floyd, whether it be uh, a mother, and it's just uh, domestic violence. It's all kinds of stuff has gone on in this world that if you are a person, mm-hmm. you have experienced some type of anxiety. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The question is, how did you deal with your anxiety? Mm-hmm. Some mm-hmm. people deal with it by drinking, smoking, um, or taking their frustration out on other people. Mm-hmm. So people deal with it in different ways, but everybody deals with it. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, you know, and I think, too, like, there's a lot of people that may have it and, like, bottle it up yeah. and not express it, and then it's going to explode, you know? It's just like a pressure pop. People. <laughs> like a pressure pop. I think it's that's so, who I am. As soon as all that pressure get done mm-hmm. and you can't tell, you, 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 you blow off. Yeah, and then it's like, the heck? What's what wrong with you? you? Yeah, what you happened to you? But that's all that me. stuff was building up over time and never dealt with it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think it's very important to deal with your anxiety, and be and, and this is a good time to deal with it. And, you know, we have some wonderful guests here today that have we have exper- they have experienced anxiety and found a way to to get through it. You know, mm-hmm. oh, what about you, Shana? Yep. I mean, well, um, I you know had anxiety since I was a kid, really, and didn't know it until I was an adult, and then it started um, basically spiraling into panic disorder or panic attacks. Um, and at that moment, you know, you feel like you don't have any control over anything. Mm. Um, so I went to the doctor, um, sought out help there. But even more than that, I started practicing like breathing exercises, mm. doing stuff like that, try to help it out. But, the, but I, one thing you did do, um, the first thing you got to do is identify you got a problem. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you can't address the problem if you don't identify it. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of people, even in the African American community sometimes, we don't address the problem. And so we can't get the problem fixed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? And so we are, or or we see therapists, you know, some people say, if Mm -hmm. you see a therapist, you're crazy. You're crazy. I was going to say, a lot of people are scared to go to the doctor for it. They don't want to be judged. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, she's wacko. You know, like, you don't want to be judged by that. But that's the reason they're there. That's a resource. We need that. Yeah, and God created those people and gave them Mm -hmm. minds to want to help other people that have that. Mm -hmm. And I I went to therapy for years and years, and then I took a little break, and then when my anxiety started ticking back up again, I went back. And um, honestly, um, I was better after that. And that's not drugs. That's not anything. Mm -hmm. That's talking through. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, matter of fact, I've seen a therapist. Um, matter of fact, her name is Dr. Dorothy Watterson. You can call me crazy <laughs> if you want to, but honestly and truthfully, if I, I've learned how to talk it out, and it has helped me to navigate through my issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because as long as it's in my mind and I can't talk it out, I feel like I gotta conquer it myself. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? And Christy, I'm quite sure you have a lot, and you even have a blog yourself that you help others to deal with anxiety. I do. I also have been dealing with anxiety since I was very young. My mom told me at one point that I was a high-strung child. A high, um, you said a high-strung? High high-strung child. I cried at everything. Wow. Um, and, but the anxiety, the panic attacks didn't mm-hmm. come until later in life. Um, and at first, again, you don't, you don't know what it is. And um, my anxiety tends to manifest physically with GI sim- symptoms. And so um, I just thought I was sick. Yeah. Um, but it's, no, there's nothing wrong. I kept mm-hmm. going to the doctor. There's nothing wrong with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a- after a time, I started to, the thing that happened with me was that I felt very alone in my anxiety. Mm. I didn't know that anyone else was like this. I, you know, it was like, I, there's something wrong with me. And it wasn't until I went online and I found a podcast about anxiety and they were talking about exactly what I was going through. Wow. And that was like, I'm not alone. Yeah. This isn't weird at all. Mm-hmm. Like that literally is what just happened to mm-hmm. me last week that this person's talking about. And so in realizing that, I also wanted to use my experiences to help other people. So if mm-hmm. I have to go through this, I want to I want to use God as my example That's where it. he uses everything for our good, mm-hmm. for those mm-hmm. who are called That's according good. to a purpose. So mm-hmm. it's like, let me take that example and turn this around for good by take, and take my experiences and write. Writing is one of my passions mm-hmm. and it's one of my gifts. So I have a blog that I write about anxiety and I'm very open and honest. Like, yeah. this happened to me. I had this fear. This happened. Mm-hmm. This is what I did with it. 
And that's and that's good because you're using the, like the so we in my weakness, mm -hmm. he's made strong. Mm -hmm. And I think that us as people feel like when we have weakness, that is it is a it's, it's a bad thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But even Paul, which is a, a, a powerful man of God, he says, listen, I got struggles. You know what I'm saying? I got issues. I got ups. I got downs. And if you if you help us, if you if you are real with yourself to know that you got struggles, you got issues, and then you'll be you'll be you'll be willing to be forthcoming with it to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people and I know I know now even even. In my particular family, I have a certain brothers and sisters of mine. They don't tell their things because they said, if I tell you what's going on with me, you'll think I'm weak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they battle the anxiety in their mind. Mm -hmm. And then that's what that's where anxiety is. It, it starts in the mind. Mm -hmm. You know what? I mean, do y'all would you say that it starts in the mind? Very much so. It, the thing with anxiety, at least it, the way it manifests for me, is racing thoughts that I can't control. Mm. And, um, you know, it can start small. It could be just a little thought, little something that pops in, but you ruminate on it and it starts to snowball and get bigger and mm. then it, re it branches out to other things. So the initial thought might be, it could be something as simple as, did that chicken go off? How long has that chicken been in the fridge? And then the next thing you know, you're just afraid of food. <laughs> like it, right. it can really wow. just, it can, that's what, because it that's, quickly. it's very fast to escalate. And the other part, and the, more you kind of try to deal with it on your own and you don't you don't deal with it it's just you let it snowball it becomes almost ingrained in you mm. because anxiety can be a learned behavior mm. so the more you do it the more you're prone to do it mm -hmm. so really the best thing for anxiety is to practice techniques that can stop those thoughts turn them around and then you start to retrain your brain so now when i have that thought did that chicken go off I don't, okay, hold it, hold it. You know you bought it such and such a day. You can always smell it. It'll smell bad if it's bad. Mm -hmm. If it smells fine, the chicken's fine, let it go. Yeah. yeah. And, like, yeah. and I can kind of do that now. Yeah. Whereas before, it would, it would just be constant. I know I smelled it, but, I mean, but if I didn't smell it right, what is it supposed to smell like? Yeah. And it would just, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, know and mm -hmm. it would blow up. But um, one thing I, I, I'm going to drive on with my anxiety was, my anxiety was people. Mm -hmm. And because somebody can say something to me and don't mean any harm with it, and or text me something, and have mm -hmm. and text and you, and they're just texting you something, but you can take it the wrong way, mm -hmm. and then you can take your men, your mentality like, oh, did she mean it like that, or did he mean it like that, or what he trying to say, <laughs> whatever. And so right then you begin it begins to snowball, and before you know it, you don't even like that person no more because of what they said, and it was unharmless. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to know what your triggers are. Like what you said, very important to identify the problem. Mm -hmm. You have to know yourself. Yeah. Um, and it's not, you don't, you don't all of a sudden be like, these are the things that bother me, the end. It's, it's a journey. Mm. The whole thing is a journey. Yeah. Like you're going to find new things that bother you and you're going to be like, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, add that to the list. All but right. it's like once you know, then you can begin to try to combat it and yeah. think about, you know, pray about it. That's, mm. you know, huge. And just, you know, find the thoughts that you can use to, you can't necessarily rationalize it away because when it's running, you, that doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> but the more you do that, the more you tell yourself, okay, this yeah. and that, and then it really helps too. I, I want to, uh, Shataka, I want, I want to aim this towards you because you, the Bible says, of course, in our weakness, you may strong. And you had a powerful testimony one time, and I want to let you share that because I believe that people need to understand that when we understand that we got an issue and we can't solve our issues, mm -hmm. if you give it over to Christ, he can make it better for you. You know what I'm saying? And and, and so I want to I want you to share that powerful testimony. Now, don't preach for us now because okay. I know you can preach right <laughs> now because it's a very, very powerful testimony. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so um, even at... Um, even here on stage as the worship leader here, there's it's being in front of people or whatever. And I, I sometimes have this paralyzing fear that either I will pass out on the stage or, you know, whatever. And uh, so one day, Easter Sunday, there were hundreds of people mm -hmm. here and I'm singing and I just start having a panic attack and I felt dizzy, I couldn't breathe. And in that moment, I, you know, I was like, okay God and I was singing what a beautiful name and I got to the bridge part that says you have no rival you have no equal mm -hmm. and in that moment that I was even singing the words I actually was talking to God like I was having a conversation with God like God I know you're in control take this off of me and the minute I released like my own 
stronghold over my life, like over trying to control it mm -hmm. myself, um, trying to maintain control and gave it to God, literally begged him. I felt like chains coming right off of me, wow. uh, like one by one, right down both arms. and. And it was a very powerful moment wow. for me. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's all. Now I want to I want to put this on, and Jen can jump off this right here. That um, you, people think with anxiety, because I'll be real with you, I've taken medicine for anxiety mm -hmm. and felt like I needed it, and you couldn't tell me otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, but as life begins to unfold and things began, I began to deal with things. I noticed that what I was I was looking for the medicine and didn't need, need to have to take it because I wasn't depending on it no, no more so I want to I want I want to bounce this off you because you know Pastor Dale has always said about you know um, people you, you, people will take medicine and think oh I, I have to take it mm -hmm. and don't, don't get me wrong and I'm gonna let you share that about that about what um, what medicine does to our anxiety mm -hmm. I mean I personally don't take medicine medicine for anxiety um, I'm one of those that bottle it up and I look, I'm like, oh, that's whatever, fine, it's fine, it's fine. And then I blow up at, like, the stupidest thing. And everybody's like, you good? You know, like, what happened? Let me loan her one of my pills <laughs> yes, right like, <laughs> <laughs> um, But, you know, I think that, that medicine is good. I mean, like Shataka said, God made these people and, and, right. and created them to mm -hmm. help others. So, you know, I don't think we should sit here and be like, oh, throw your pill bottle away, girl. Jesus is going to deliver you. Mm -hmm. He may. But he may do it through the medicine as yep, well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I think that it's really important for us to find ways to cope. Mm -hmm. You know, the breathing exercises. Some people find comfort in music. Yeah. Some people need to just get away by themselves in a quiet space mm -hmm. because of the chaos around them doesn't help them slow their thoughts, yeah. you know? I think that, you know, I've, my husband deals with anxiety um, and PTSD and all of this. So I've, at, I was um, guilty of being the one that's like, just chill. Yeah. Like, yeah. you just mm -hmm. need to chill. Like, it is not that serious. And I had said that to him a lot throughout our marriage. Like, dude, like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, yeah. it, you know? And he's just looking at me like, hello? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Because, like, his brain is, like, ah, on mm -hmm. fire. Right. Yeah. And I had went to a couple therapy sessions with him for him just and sat and listened. And I was like, wow. Like, the way that they said it, like, the brain on fire, the constant thoughts, the where it's one little thing, but to, to him, it's huge, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And he had been on medication for a while. He's tapered off himself. I know you said you mm -hmm. have, too, um, but he needs it sometimes. Like, he'll have it, and, you know, if mm -hmm. something yeah. Yeah. triggers him, it's there, yeah. and that helps him, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think that that, that that needs to be said. It is okay. Yeah. Can I you interject know? here, yeah, too? Yeah, for sure. I think one thing that's really important to point out is that not to use medication as a crutch, mm. but as a helper. Yes. Yeah. So for me, I'm on medication. I have both a, a daily medication that I take kind of more for maintenance, mm -hmm. but I also have um, medication that I can take in the event of actual panic that will shut that off and gotcha. kind of the reset button kind of thing. But the thing is, you can't rely on the medication mm -hmm. to just kill the anxiety. Yeah. You, you can't kill anxiety through external things, whether mm. it be medication, mm -hmm. whether it be drinking, whether it be whatever, it's not going to kill it. The only thing that's going to get rid of your anxiety is for you to work on it internally in your own mind. That's good. Work with God, let him work on you. Mm -hmm. The medication can sometimes give you the space to do that. Mm -hmm. and your brain is racing too much that you can't be rational. Medication just says, okay, take it down a notch. Go from an eight to a four. Gotcha. Now I can think mm -hmm. and I can begin to work on it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I believe that Pastor Dale says it like this when he talks about medicine. It's like a person that is on high blood pressure medicine, um, taking it on a day-to-day -day basis. But then they notice them, sometimes they'll start working out and mm -hmm. eating better yeah. and whatever. And before you know it, they have to come off that medicine. And then so, mm -hmm. but uh, miracles do happen where people do come off medicine, but they put things in place to right. be able to come out of that. Right. Like you, right. you were saying, Christy, about exercising your mind, having those exercises. Well, physical exercise phys it helps with anxiety, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. definitely. So, I, so the thing is either um, whether you're going to be dependent upon that or whether you're going to get out and start trying to do other things to, to don't make you think about, your anxiety, you know, right. so so definitely that I I, I, I do believe that it, it is a time now to 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 take a itinerary of your own life, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? What 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 
what ticks me off or what sends mm -hmm. me off. Because the smallest little thing can tick me off. I, I'm like, and, and I won't say it, I smile like, mm, 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 mm. you <laughs> know, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah this and you just lay it all out. Mm -hmm. Like, that assuming. More like anger issues, Daniel. I'm not sure <laughs> that if it's actually anxiety. Uh, we, we can talk after, after class. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know but that's what anxiety does. It takes you to anger. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it, can, it takes it you can, to anger. Yeah. It, it also takes you to fear. Mm -hmm. it, 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 so anxiety can take you all kind of places Depression. if you allow your tail yourself to go there. Mm -hmm. Depression is a big one. Mm -hmm. I think it's easy to get discouraged mm -hmm. when you're anxious. I know mm -hmm. for me, especially because I'm a I'm a Christian. I don't feel guilty for feeling anxious. Mm. Yeah. So I'm not only anxious, now I'm also guilty and depressed and regretful. Wow. And that just makes it worse. Mm. And actually my last panic attack was because of that. I just mm. got so caught up in the anxiety and then in the depression, I was literally on my couch crying and couldn't move, couldn't do anything but lie there and cry. And I was, I was, I was trying to pray, but I, I just, felt alone, completely mm. isolated and alone, you know, like that, you know, that moment on the cross, my God, my God, why? I mean, obviously I'm not being crucified, but that's what yeah, it felt moment, like. Yeah. I literally right. felt completely alone and forsaken in that moment. Mm. And um, it's that can, it's a dangerous place to get to, mm. but um, you know, I'm very blessed that I have a wonderful family. I was, I was able to finally pick up the phone and I called my mom and she was like, take a pill, take a nap, reset. You know, and I hadn't thought of it as a time to take a pill because it wasn't a panic attack. Mm. I was crying. I was depressed. I wasn't short of breath. I didn't have a racing heart. But my mom recognized what I didn't. So I think in addition to knowing yourself, like, it's wonderful if you can have people around you who mm. can also help you and can help you recognize when you don't and can mm -hmm. be like, hey, you need to take a second, whether that's take a pill, whether that's do your breathing exercises, mm -hmm. let me put right. some music on for you, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. important to share with the people closest to you. I'm, yeah. I want to share, I want to, I want to tap on this for a minute because you said something and it goes back to the scripture, in our weakness he's made strong. Mm -hmm. You say you was on the couch crying and you was trying to pray and couldn't pray. It reads me back to the scripture in Galatians. It says, our spirit make it utters and groaners that cannot be uttered I mean sure. that you, you can't understand what your spirit man needs but your spirit man kind of prays for you right. and I tell people all the time your your tears are silent prayers mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying where you can't get to God or say nothing out of your mouth because your mind is running your spirit he knows, knows. Mm -hmm. and it, he knew that you had to call your mama because your mama had the right answer mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. your prayer was being answered even though you may have thought it was depression because in my weakness that's true he's mm -hmm. made. that's ah. very mm -hmm. true I and think it, so Go ahead. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, but no, I was going to bounce off of what Christy said. Um, like my husband to me is that rock for me. And so, and I know he's glad that there's some kind of deliverance for my anxiety because I'm going to tell you what, he bless his heart. Like, thank you God for him because I, I'm like, you can't leave the room, but I need to go to the bathroom. Too bad. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you go, I may die kind of mm. thing. Um, so, you know, I do think people put, or God puts people rather in yeah. your life and those are your people that you can count on and call on and that's no accident. Mm -hmm. Your mom and them being, you know, given the wisdom to, to know you well enough to, like you said, see things you don't. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I think that's like? important what she was saying, you know, to be vulnerable enough to open up and let people know yeah. that, that you do have an help. issue with that mm -hmm. so that someone can help you mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. be there for you. If, even if they can't physically help you, they can be there, yeah. you know, and, and then that just opens up so much more because when, when you open up about it, you know, looking at Chautauqua, looking at you, I would never, ever think you mm -hmm. had anxiety issues, right. but, you know, it's not, it doesn't discriminate, like, yeah. it, you know, like, you're not free just because you're a Christian, mm -hmm. you're not free just because you're a worship leader, mm -hmm. like, you know, you can't pick and choose, and so I think it's really important to be vulnerable and open up and let people know that you have a struggle you're probably gonna open up that they have a struggle too, yeah. and right. we can help each other. I think yeah. that's where it's at. So yeah. you wanna preach, you preach us out of here? Yeah, so I, I, I say this right here. Matter of fact, the most talented, anointed people deal with anxiety. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. If you have a, some type of gift that you're trying to get out, you're gonna fight that, because that's what the enemy uses mm -hmm. to fight against us. 
The Bible says in John 10 and 10 that the enemy cometh but to kill, steal, and destroy. So he's going to use everything in your mind. He's going to use everything you see to try to destroy you. And so he uses anxiety. He uses fear. He uses depression. He uses all those tactics to try to, um, to, try to consume you with everything that's going on around you. But the Bible says, cast all your anxieties upon me, for he careth for you. So let me tell you this. Anxiety starts in the mind. So I want to encourage you today that if you're dealing with anxiety, my, 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 my word to you is to change your mind. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. So I want to tell you, even though you may be going through some stuff, just give it over to God. Just give it over. Pray it. And when you pray it, just forget about it and go on about your business or talk about it or write about it or email somebody or text somebody. Do whatever you got to do to to, to, to get it out of you, to, to, to um, as, they, as they say, uh, to detox from what you've been going through that week. I promise you it will help you because God don't never intend for you to go through something by yourself. He always wants somebody to go through it with you. That's right. That's right. Thank you guys so much for watching this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. You can go to lifespring.online and fill out a prayer card. We'd love to pray for you this week. Um, thank you guys so much for sharing your stories and all of your coping mechanisms. We hope to see you next week. All right. Bye-bye.